Is it any wonder that as America has waged violence throughout the world, violence has overtaken us in our own nation? It has not come as an invasion. It has come from within. Our bombs, our drones, our armies are incapable of stopping the gun violence on our streets and schools or domestic violence in our homes. I see the same link here as my father and Martin Luther King saw about the Vietnam War. They saw that war. They believed that we could not have warfare abroad without bringing that violence home to our streets, to our attitudes, to our communities. Foreign violence is inseparable from domestic violence. Both are aspects of a basic orientation and a basic set of priorities. Waging endless wars. <laughs> Waging endless wars abroad, we have neglected the foundation of our own well-being. We have a decaying economic infrastructure. We have a demoralized people and a despairing people. We have toxins in our air and our soil and our water. We have deteriorating mental and physical health. These are the wages of war. What will be? <laughs> what will be the wages of peace? They will be healing of all the symptoms of America's decline. None of these are beyond our capacity to heal. We can restore America to the awesome vitality of the original Kennedy era. My uncle said it well. He said that no problem of human destiny is beyond human beings. He warned us that, quote, too many of us think that peace is impossible. Too many of us think it is unreal. But that is the dangerous and defeatist belief. It leads to the conclusion that war is inevitable, that mankind is doomed, that we are gripped by forces that, are, that we cannot control. We need not accept that view. Our problems are man-made, and therefore they can be solved by man. So how do we actually do that? We started by replacing the vicious cycle of suspicion with a virtuous cycle of trust building. We reverse escalation. It takes courage to make the first move toward peace. Let's see what happens when we stop the provocation and the escalation and offer instead an olive branch. Each step we take invites those who, call our, who we call our adversaries to take a step further. Maybe Russia won't respond. Maybe they won't respond in kind or in any way, but at least we will know that we tried and the whole world will know it too. That step comes from a changed attitude and from courage. Speaking in the midst of the Cold War, John Kennedy asked us, quote, not only to see the distorted and desperate view of the other side, not to see conflict as inevitable accommodation as impossible, and communication is nothing more than exchange of threats. Let's take a moment and allow the, that to sink in. Today, America has broken off practically all diplomatic contact with Russia, so that communication has indeed become little more than an exchange of threats and insults. FDR met with Stalin. JFK met with Khrushchev. Nixon met with Brezhnev. Reagan met with Gorbachev. Can't Biden meet with Putin? Do we have, can't we? Or can't we at least, can't we at least begin a conversation? Do we now have such a distorted and desperate view of the other side that we won't even speak to them?